Hi everyone, you have probably already seen my first two videos on parametric non-destructive modeling, where I showed several tricks on how to model this camera lens using mostly modifiers. If not, I would suggest you watch those videos first, because in this one right here, I will go over three more things I'm sure you will find interesting, especially how you can subdivide a mesh only on one axis. Let's go! Okay, let's start with the easiest part, which is this ring here. Let's go into local view, that's what it looks like. Now if you have something like this, obviously you have a symmetry either on one or two axes, or even three. And uh, this is where the mirror modifier comes in. So for this model, I only modeled this one quarter piece here. And then I have the mirror modifier on the X and the C, which mirrors it over here and then down here. And the cool thing with that is, if I wanted to go in and let's say change this for some reason, then I don't have to change it four times, I just have to change it once and all the mirrored parts update automatically. That's quite easy, but what about a piece like this? Here, we can't really use a mirror modifier because we don't have any axis to mirror on. Uh, it's still kind of symmetrical, or, or should I say repetitive. And whenever we have something repeated over and over, the array modifier is probably our friend. So let's try to recreate this in a new blend file. So we take mesh circle. Um, let's do something like, let's, let's do five five parts. So here we had those three segments. Now let's make five segments just to be different. Okay, let's go into edit mode, rotate x90. So we have it standing up like this, just like on the lens model. Let's extrude on the Y a little and take everything, extrude, escape, scale to give it this ring. Now we want to make our five segments. We need a circle with five vertices, rotate x90, so we know in this object which pieces to keep and which to delete. So basically I want to keep, uh, to switch this on so that I can selecting the, the stuff in the background, I want to keep all of this here. This is one fifth. Now control I to select all the other vertices. X delete vertices. So now I have this one segment of a fifth of my circle. Mm, let's, I don't know, do something with this. Maybe bring this down just like in the other model, something like that. Maybe. I don't know. You get the idea, it doesn't matter. But what we really want now, don't need this anymore, is to have this repeated over like that. So like I said before, the array modifier is our friend and we want five pieces. So set the count to five, but of course we don't want them going this way. We want them to go around in a circle. So we need another object and the plane axis empty. Go in here, set the array modifier instead of relative offset, set it to object offset, take the empty. And now we, can, we have an empty that we can use to adjust the array modifier. And we can not only move it, we can also rotate it. So if I rotate, I can do this. Now, how far do I have to rotate? Well, uh, 360 degrees divided by five. And I can enter this right in here. Every number input field in Blender also has a little uh, calculator built in. So I can enter uh, 360 divided by five. Enter is 72 degrees. And here we go. Now let me switch this back on. 
and select this because now we see a little problem here. See these parts here? That's because in our single object here, our mesh, we have edges on this end, so these, and we have the edges on this end. Now the array modifier just uh, duplicates everything over and then we have double edges in the same location right here. And we can see that like that. But of course the array modifier has a solution for that. We'll just switch on merge and it merges this one, this one, this one, this one, but not this one. That is the first and the last piece meeting. And if we want to merge those as well, we have to switch on this checkbox. And now we have perfect, awesome uh, geometry. And just like before, we can still go in and for example, move this out if we wanted to. And we only have to do it once instead of five times. Or imagine you have not five segments, but 150. You would have to go in and select 150 edges and this one and that one and this one and now here all we have to do is one segment and we still can use the modifier now of course we can even go in and for example look at it from this way delete all of those vertices i had something else selected Let's do that again. Select only this one side of vertices. Delete those. And instead of having even more geometry in our mesh, we just add a solidify and do it this way. So now we really have probably the least amount. Of course, we could, you know, optimize our mesh, but the goal of this parametric non-destructive modeling using modifiers is always to use or create as little mesh geometry as possible and then do most of the work using modifiers. Okay, so the array modifier with an object offset, we can create these kinds of objects just like this one here on the lens in the back. And now the third thing I want to show you in this uh, video is in regards to this little label piece here, this inlay. So how do we go about this? Let's just uh, go out, delete everything, everything like that. Start with a new scene basically. So what we want is a mesh plane, going to edit mode, scale it down to make it look similar to what we have in the camera. So if we want two things. We want to bend it onto the curve and we want those little round corners here. Okay, let's, let's look at the bending part first. So I add a curve circle, then go into edit mode, rotate X90. And then of course we could take a curve modifier on the plane and select the circle as a target. And it can't really do anything because our mesh only has four vertices. There's not enough geometry for Blender to actually make it bend on this curve. So one solution, of course, is to hit Control R, scroll up, add a bunch of, of cuts in here. And when we do that, now Blender can bend it. But really, um, there must be a better solution. So the first thing you might think of is, well, of course there is, there's a subdivision surface modifier and we can put that on top of the curve and it gives us more geometry. So if we crank this up quite a bit and maybe set it to simple. So we have the corners here. Now we get a geometry that Blender can bend onto the curve, but if we look in here, or if we switch on the wireframe, you can see what, what's happening. We not only get the cuts this way, the ones that we actually need in order to bend it, we also get all these cuts in here going this way. 
Now, sadly, the subdivision surface modifier has no options for me to say, hey, you know what, only subdivide on the x-axis. So this is not really optimal for, for what I'm looking for. And I tried to find a better solution where I can use a modifier, so parametric solution, to just subdivide on the x-axis. Okay, let's get rid of the subdivision surface. Now, what other modifier is there that generates edges, basically? Well, the bevel modifier. So let me just hide the curve for now. Let's add a bevel modifier and we can see that basically we can't see anything. It doesn't really do anything. Why? Because the bevel modifier only puts a bevel onto an edge that is connected to another face. So normally you would have something like a cube. And when we put a bevel on that, here this edge connects this face and this face, or is between two faces, and that's where the bevel modifier can then add new edges to create the nice round bevel. So how do we get uh, edges going this way in here? Well, we would have to do one loop card, like Control R, place it right in the center there, and then we have uh, six vertices in our mesh, and the bevel modifier can now actually create new edges for us. And we only get edges going on the x-axis, nothing on the y. So if I turn up the segments here, I get a whole bunch of segments going this way, but nothing going this way. Now this looks promising, but of course, instead of putting this uh, loop cut in here, there is a better solution. Let's just delete those vertices and you know bring those out maybe now this is not necessary because i put the the loop cut right in the center but just to show you how you could go about this we could add a mirror put that all the way on the top of our modifier stack enable clipping here and then move these two vertices on the x-axis until they get stuck now our mesh only has four vertices, but we have an edge in the middle. And the bevel modifier can use this edge to create this kind of stuff here. Now let's bring up this, this width here. Maybe turn up the segment. Okay, so something like this. And now if I re-enable my curve modifier, now I have a subdivision only going on the x-axis and the bevel modifier can use that to bend it. Uh, but we're still missing our round corners here. Remember how we did that in the last video? We select these two vertices. Now in this case I can't select all four because I don't want anything around in here, of course. I just want these two. If I want another bevel modifier to make the, the round corner, just for two vertices, I first have to put them in a vertex group. So do that. Then we assign another bevel modifier, bring that above the curve, select only vertices and only for this vertex group. And we get this. So if we turn up the segments, we get a round corner here can still adjust this width, but you can already see that we get this nasty stuff in here. Now, why is that and how can we get rid of it? The bevel modifier that creates these edges here, these loop cuts, sort of interpolates between uh, this point and this point. Now, this point is in the vertex group and this one isn't. And so we sort of get a little bit of a, a bevel here and none here. It's kind of weird, but there is a really, really easy solution to this. And that is to simply put this bevel that gives us that round corner above the other one. So now this bevel that's set to only vertex and only the vertex group with these two makes this round corner. And then after that, this bevel uh, modifier creates all of these loop cuts. Another thing we can 
a look at here is this bevel modifier that creates the loop cuts. Of course, the width of our, basically we have a single bevel in the middle here with a whole lot of segments. We can turn it up quite a bit. The width here is kind of important because we want it to be distributed in sort of a uniform manner. But also there is an easy solution for this. Instead of using the width method offset here, we just use percent and set the percent to 100. And you can see here that stretches out this last uh, loop cut here, this last edge, all the way to where basically the first vertex is of this uh, round part here. So we don't have to think about this anymore and we can play with the segments and create more or less subdivisions. Of course, we would want to stay with even numbers here because when we look in the, the middle here, in the center line, if we take an odd number, uh, we lose our edge in the, or we get an extra edge in the middle from the mirror modifier and that might lead to some shading issues. So just stick with even numbers and looking here, we sort of have to find a number for the segments here that matches our bevel here that creates this last piece. So this last piece now is bigger than those. I don't want that. I want them to be similar. So let's do 42. And now we have a subdivision modifier using a bevel going only in the x direction. So we have the least amount of geometry to deal with and we have the nice round corners here and we're on the curve and of course now we can again solidify, give it some thickness, W, shade smooth and auto smooth and we get this very nice looking piece just like on our lens up here. Let's talk a little bit more about the curve modifier. One thing that's always interesting to note here is why is it on the bottom now? Why is our object down here and not up here? So let me just uh, hide some of these modifiers, maybe also this one. So we have something easier to work with. The reason for our object being on the bottom now is be because this circle, although it looks like an infinite thing, has a start and a, and a finish and it's down here. This control point is the start and the end in this case of this circle. And that's why our object is being placed down here. So there's an easy solution if you want this object to be up on top. You just rotate your circle on the Y, R, Y and you flip it up on top. Okay, so I hit escape, R, Y 180 and now it's perfectly on the top. Now another thing that you might notice is if I go into my object here and extrude that up on the C just for demonstration purposes, you notice that you might want, now we get some weird looking thing because now the bevel modifier, our bevel that does the subdivisions is also uh, subdividing this stuff here, which again, we could use vertex groups and stuff. But um, I just wanted to show you another thing with the circle or any curve in Blender. If this is not going the right way now for you, if you, want, if you modeled this to point up, but you wanted it here to go inwards, there's also a way to do this. You don't have to go into your object and then move these uh, two points down instead to make them go inwards. Of course you can do that, <laughs> but there's also another way. This circle, each control point of this circle doesn't only have the, the point itself, the two handles and the direction, which you can see with these arrows here, it also has a rotation. So I can select all of these control points and hit control T and then rotate or change the rotation of the control points. So 
So I'm rotating the, all of the control points. I, again, I can enter 180 on the numpad. And now, although I modeled this thing to point up on the curve, it's pointing down. So let me just delete those to get back our nice looking thing here. Let me go back into the curve. Take this control point, control T, and I can twist T for twist, I guess. I can twist this control point around like that. And remember, all we still have are just four vertices. And this is it for this video. If you know of another way of subdividing a mesh in one direction only, then please let us know. If you found these tips to be useful, then don't forget to like, subscribe and enable notifications. Check out the other product visualization videos on my channel. Thanks for watching. Crispy out.